Hey guys, it's Jim Rose from uh, RPM Dynamics and Midas 101. Welcome to our video today. Today what we are going to do is we're going to give you a video about latency delay issues that you can run into by doing multiple miking or mics and DIs on, a, on the same instrument and feeding multiple channels on a console and not paying attention to how the uh, timing involved in these situations can affect your mix. What we did today is we brought in a Mesa Boogie guitar rig and in the guitar rig we've got an SM57 mic in the cabinet and we have a Palmer DI also feeding the console. What a Palmer DI is, it's a DI box that works off the loading side of the speaker on the amplifier and it takes the back load of the amplifier into the box and it emulates a speaker cabinet. A lot of people use these in rock and roll, a lot of people are using them in country. People are looking to get the characteristics of the DI that they want along with the characteristics of, this, of the microphone and they want to combine these things together to create the sound they're looking for. The problem you run into is if you try to couple these things together, the electronic signal you're getting off the DI box is immediate. It's a speed of light to your console electronic signal. The microphone does the same thing from the microphone element back. Unfortunately, the microphone is about three, three and a half inches from the speaker cone. So the time it takes for that sound to get from the speaker cone to the microphone, is it, there's a delay in that time. And that latency that's induced at that point creates a problem. If you take 2,000 hertz, the wavelength of 2,000 hertz is about seven inches. So that sine wave that it builds is about seven inches long. If you take half that distance, which is about three and a half inches, and you move it, half of that sine wave is going to be hitting, you're going to be about that much of a, of, a, of a delay getting to that microphone element. That's going to induce a half wave latency. It's going to create a problem with phasing and it's going to knock those frequencies out of phase in that area. Anything within a quarter wave of that is going to be, have a problem with subtraction instead of addition. So you're going to have certain frequencies now because of this, this delay time in here that is going to have certain frequencies that are going to couple certain frequencies are going to are going to are going to cancel and certain frequencies that are in the safe zone are not going to couple or subtract they're going to work with each other but it's going to change the sound from an addition to something different and that's not what you want you're looking to get the best of both those instruments if you hard pan these two sources to uh, different speakers say left and right in your PA you're not going to hear that problem because the electronic coupling of those frequencies isn't going to happen in a single point source. But if you send them to a mono signal in a PA, or a hearing impaired line, or a front fill, or an out fill, or something that's being fed mono, the guitars are going to sound like that summed mix. They're not going to sound like each of those, those uh, microphones or DIs you're trying to use. So what we decided to do is we do an experiment. And we brought a guest in today that's going to play some guitar for you. So we have Devil Head. And Devil Head is going to play some guitar for you. He plays an evil guitar. And uh, why don't we just call Devil Head, uh, we'll just call him Tom for the hell of it. It's a three letter word and it works, right? Cool. So Tom's going to play some guitar and we're going to record it into Logic and then we're going to play it back and we're going to show you what we're talking about. And hopefully this little experiment we're going to do right now is going to help you guys in the future in uh, cleaning up your mixes and realizing why things are weird when you start coupling these things together. So Tom, you want to give us some guitar? <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to set this, this uh, session that we just recorded with Tom up as a, as a loop. And we're going to take our console, and in Midas it's really easy to get into a, a tape return mode, and we're going to set this console, it's actually already set for it because we haven't really been playing through the console yet. And uh, in doing this we can hit play here in our DAW, and the, uh, the tracks that he just played are playing back through the console here. And what we're going to do is we are going to unmute the DI side. And now we're listening to Tom playing guitar through a DI. If we unmute the 57 side, now we're listening to the PA with Tom playing through a 57. If we unmute both of them, that is exactly not what his guitar sounded like on either of those sources. 
didn't sound anything like that. And the reason it sounds like this is because there's frequencies that are adding, there's frequencies that are subtracting, and there's frequencies that are just staying in the neutral zone that are in the quarter wave areas that are actually just not, not addition or subtraction. They're working with themselves. But it's not linear. It's not doing what you're expecting it to do and giving you the best of both of these, instrument, these uh, sources that you've tried to get your tones out of. So what we've... Um, what we're going to show you here is that there's a simple way to fix that. And if you go into uh, your console on a, a digital console now with like a Midas, there's channel delay built into the console here. And this channel delay gives you the ability to, uh, in a Midas it's like two hundredths of a second. So you can, you can get to a pretty fine number. And you can delay uh, your sources to try to put them back in time. So the way we're going to do it today is we're going to take the DI, because we're pretty sure the DI is the line that's, that's electronically arriving first, and we're going to add some delay to it. But we're going to do a trick. Instead of trying to listen to when they couple and they get louder, we're going to take this DI line and we're going to flip it out of phase. By flipping it out of phase, that means that when these two sources get to the point where they're coupling the most, they should subtract the most, because now we're throwing one out of phase. And all we have to do is listen for when that signal gets as quiet as possible. And then when it gets as quiet as it can get, it means that when we flop it back into phase, we should be as close to in phase across the board based on adjusting for that delay time of the microphone for these things to be doing what they're supposed to. So what we're going to do now is we are going to we're going to come down here to our, our delay settings here, and we are going to listen to both these sources, and we're going to start adding delay to the, to the DI until we hear this uh, signal cancel down to a null. And you can hear as we're scrolling through the timing, you can hear how different frequencies are being affected each time we add delay to this it's making uh, different frequencies affected based on their wavelength. You can see I'll go past it. You'll see it starts coming back in. And as soon as we flop it back into phase, now what we've done is we've created a summing between both these sources that you're hearing both of them. And you can see if we take these instruments now on the console and we pan them from mono to stereo to two sources, the sound that you hear in this position to the other position is relatively linear because they're actually coupling correctly and they're working with themselves. If we remove this delay and we take, and we take this DI and we put the delay, let's go back into our screen here, and we put this delay back to zero, you can hear it's just falling on its face again. If we separate them to single point sources, and we sum these things, and we and we send them to left, right again. You hear that the, the microphones, or the mic and the DI, turn back into the original sounds. So what we've shown you is that if you separate these to a sing, to uh, to different sources or different speakers, different places, and they're not summing inside the console, you're allowing them to recreate the sound that they actually created on the instrument. And in, the, in the, the venue and the anomaly, because electronically they're not summing those instruments, uh, and your arrivals to your ear are picking them up in different places, you don't really notice that problem that you hear as when you're trying to do addition inside the console electronically, because you're trying to create the sound of them summed together the other way. So you really don't want to be summing things that are out of time inside the console. You see DIs and, and microphones on bass rigs quite often and you don't really notice this big of a problem. Usually on a, on a bass rig, you know, you turn the mic and the DI, and you turn them up, and, and you don't really hear that problem. That's because on a bass rig, the primary frequencies you're listening to are much lower, and the wavelength of those frequencies, instead of being seven inches, are somewhere between 10 and 20 feet for the primary things. So if, if, you're, if your wavelength is that long, and you move something a couple of inches, you are still so close to in phase on the primary wave that they're still in an area where they're coupling, so it's really not predominant. But as you raise in frequency, your wavelength shortens. And as soon as you get into that area of guitars and vocals and things like that, this is when you really, really recognize these problems. So if you're going to be using DIs and mics put together, or if you have microphones that are different distances apart, 
if you're going to be summing them to a mono source electronically inside of your console, pay attention to those distances and those differences and listen. And you might find out that just using the tools like you can find in this Midas console of going in and delaying one of your sources to the other one and putting them back in time, you'll find out that your phase is going to be even and your timing is going to be even in your waves across the band. Uh, just flipping it out of phase, that's going to that's going to knock different frequencies in, in in and out of phase. It's not going to align them back up so the waves are riding with each other. You'll still recognize the acoustic characteristics of each of the mics or your mic and your DI based on them sounding different because of that. But at least now everything frequency ri is ri is riding in time with itself. Um, we hope you like this video, and uh, Tom. Thanks a lot for coming down and giving us some evil music. And uh, this is Jim Rose with Midas 101. Thanks for watching.